Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today we're gonna to be comparing the cost of running the Ford Lightning versus running my gas truck. Now this is a lot more exciting to me than the towing video and probably the main reason why I would consider even buying an electric truck. When I first read about electric trucks and the negativity surrounding the towing issues with them, I wanted to try them out for myself because there is this intense bias that still exists against electric vehicles. As an engineer myself, I see this when I'm bringing new products to the market. This happens with new technology, and it's usually driven by user error or a lack of education surrounding the use of the product. The thing that gets me excited about electric vehicles is actually the cost savings over gas vehicles. And I recently tested the Ford Lightning while towing the boat on my normal route. And I found that it was more than sufficient for me for most jobs, although I would probably opt for the base model of the truck instead of the fully loaded one I was given by Ford, and I'll tell you why in a second. For my use case, the most intense thing I do is tow a boat twice a year, once to put it in the lake when boating season starts, and once to pull it out. I also use the truck for real estate renovations and generally moving things around. So in normal driving, the Ford truck showed 300 miles of range with a full charge. F-150 is charged to 100%, 289 miles of range, 100% battery. And when towing, the driving range would adjust accurately as soon as you entered in your trailer information. I think the empty trailer is 1,500 pounds or something. Confirm. Boat trailer empty is active. Okay, so we have that set up. I have 150 miles of range now. So with that being said, it is actually hard for me to complain about the driving range, even though I know that would help generate clicks and views for YouTube. Ford's system is pretty foolproof, and if you take a little bit of time to learn how to use it properly, it works very well. I actually prefer it over gas and diesel powertrains for light duty jobs. The most impressive thing about this is that I can't even feel the weight of the trailer. The, the throttle response is instant because it's an electric motor. It's just phenomenal compared to a gasoline powered truck or a diesel powered truck. This for, for workloads is actually a better power plant if you can deal with the range limit. Now, I also started analyzing the cost of running the electric truck versus my gas truck. For some of you guys, especially those of you who work in construction, the electricity cost of the Ford will actually be zero dollars. And here's an example. When I worked in construction as an engineer and we were on a job site, we would often just wire things directly into the electrical panels on the site when we needed power. Our breaker, we got a 40 amp breaker here. We're gonna put our ground in first. See if we have power on this. 32 amps, okay. Now we'll plug it into the charge port. It is incredibly easy to do this. So I could see construction guys wiring in a temporary outlet at job sites and never needing to worry about filling up their truck. Also, same idea goes for your home. It is very easy to install a charger in your home in fact, it will increase your home's value, both in resale or when you go to rent it out. One of the biggest market inefficiencies in real estate the past few years has been to buy EV-friendly properties, install an EV charger, and then adjust the rent accordingly. The rental market right now is demanding EV chargers, and I made a separate video about how I invested a million dollars into this idea, and it has actually been one of my best investments. Now, if you don't have access to a charger at your home, there are free chargers available that you can find using your smartphone. Also, some people have had luck asking their work to install chargers at their office. I did this at a previous job and I got free electricity every day. And that was when I was driving that Fiat 500e for the finance series to show you how to save money. Now, there are a lot of different ways to approach the free electricity issue. And with that said, I'm gonna compare the costs as if I had to pay for electricity for the Ford truck. Even though I get electricity for free, I have a level two charger in my airplane hangar and the electricity is free. I covered that in another video as well. And 
let's for the sake of comparison say that you have to go to a charger and pay the full price to charge your Ford truck and then compare it to my gas truck. So we will say that I do not have access to free electricity and I have to pay to charge the truck publicly. For the Ford, I have a 131 kilowatt hour battery and if I go to a local charging station and I pay the 29 cent per kilowatt hour fee for DC fast charging, I am looking at a total of $37.99 to fill up the truck. With the Chevy, I have a 36 gallon tank and regular gas cost me $5.99 and 9 tenths of a cent per gallon when I was doing this test. So I'm looking at $215.96 to fill up my Chevy truck. So with the respective range and efficiency of each truck, I am looking at a cost of $145 to drive the Ford 1,000 miles and $705 to drive my Chevy 1,000 miles. On an annual basis, I would drive my truck 12,000 miles and the cost gap between the electric truck and the gas truck here is pretty significant. It's at the level where the electric truck would actually pay for itself fairly quickly. So does it make sense for me to buy this electric truck? At $93,000 MSRP, the answer for me is a hard no. And the reason is because there is a base model available. I would be interested in the less expensive base model truck because it costs less than half as much. And I found that I don't even need the driving range of the larger battery truck. When I did the towing test with the larger battery truck, I had originally brought along a level two charger and the hardware to wire it in at Lake Arrowhead, just in case I ran out of battery. However, when I got to the lake, I found that I had plenty of battery left to make it back home, even while towing the boat. Yeah, so 58% after towing this trailer up the mountain is pretty impressive. I don't think I need to plug the truck in at all. My thought is that in the future, I can just install a level two charger at the lake house and the base model F-150 Lightning would work just fine for me. I would also save myself a nice $50,000. With all this being said, I would not let the negative reviews of the truck dissuade you from purchasing it. It will work very well for most people and most use cases. Most of the negative media I've seen comes from a lack of understanding of EV technology. But anyway, I'm very excited about the future of electric trucks, specifically because of the cost savings. I didn't even touch on the section 179 tax deduction in this video. For now, that is all I have for you. Thank you for watching, and as always, make sure that you enjoy your car.